Welcome back everybody, Eric here. Today we're going to be doing a special Battle of video where we take two products that do similar things, pit them against each other, and see who comes out on top. We're going to be looking at the Sausage Maker's dry aging steak wraps and they're going to be going head to head with the very popular very established umai dry dry aging steak bags so let's get into it first let's take a look at the sausage makers brand new product they're called premium dry aging steak wraps everything that you need comes in this little package let's go ahead and open the package and see what's inside and as i grab the first thing out of the package those are the wraps that's a plant-based material and the next thing I grab out of the package is some elastic netting and then finally there's some DIY instructions along with some frequently asked questions now let's go ahead and look at the umai dry version of their dry aging product and this is called the dry aging steak artisan meat pack and in this particular pack it looks like we're gonna have some umai dry bags something called vac mouse strips which is what that white cloth is and then also some easy to follow instructions. The bags that are used for the Umai kit are some sort of an extruded plastic, probably made from something called Tublin tin, although I'm not entirely sure about that. Either case, they're a special type of plastic that forms a membrane around your meat. So along with the bags and this vac mouse strip that keeps the liquid from going into your vacuum sealer, it looks like this kit is relatively simple. Both kits look easy to use. The instructions are easy to follow. Let's get into it with project number one. We're gonna be dry aging a veal strip loin for 90 days. I wanted to see what a small roast would do with both of these dry aging kits. The instructions for the sausage makers wrap say to dampen your roast, put it in the middle of that plant-based material and begin to wrap it, making sure there's no air pockets. Once you do that and your roast is completely wrapped, put it inside of that elastic netting. And according to the sausage maker, that's gonna make sure that that wrap stays firmly attached to the roast. And it's also gonna help maintain the shape of your meat through the dry aging process. Now that that's done, let's do the same thing, but with Umai Dry's product. And Umai suggests that the roast is also wet. That's gonna help the roast adhere to the bag during the dry aging process. But so far, the difference is that with Umai, we are gonna have to vacuum seal it. So let's take this roast in the bag and let's stick it in our vac master to get this thing vac sealed. It is important to know that these aren't vacuum seal bags, and so they don't act the same way as vacuum seal bags do. As you can see, I've already lost the seal that I put on mine because it's very fragile. It opens up very easily. You do need a lot of heat from your vacuum sealer, and as you can see in attempt number two, with about seven or eight seal marks, we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on a tray with my other strip loin from the sausage maker, and we're gonna put that in the refrigerator ensuring that it gets airflow on the top and on the bottom. And at this point, all we do is wait. And now on to project number two. For this project, we're looking at a Wagyu strip loin marbling score seven plus, and we're gonna be dry aging this Wagyu strip loin for about 60 days. Now. We're gonna be using the Umai dry bag first. So our strip loin has been moistened. It's nice and wet. We're gonna place it in that Umai dry bag and then we're gonna go ahead and seal it up. And now we're gonna take our other roast and use the Sausage Maker's dry aging steak wraps. We wanna make sure that our roast is damp. You don't want it too wet because trust me, if it's too wet, you will rip the sheet. It gets very fragile. And uh, I know this from experience. We wanna make sure that we wrap it so that there's no air pockets. And then once our roast is completely wrapped, we're gonna put it inside our elastic netting so that it'll hold the shape and it'll keep that wrap nice and tight to the roast. Now 
Now that both strip loins are complete, I noticed that the Umai dry bag lost its seal again, and that's because the seal on it is very fragile. If you mess with it or jostle it too much, it will open up, but no worries. I grabbed a new bag, two more attempts in the vacuum sealer, and now it's all sealed up. So finally, before we put it in the fridge, we're gonna record our green weight. And then once we're done with that, into the fridge it goes for 60 days. The time has finally come to see what everything looks like. It's now all ready. Our veal strip loin has been dry aging for 90 days. We're gonna open it up right now so you can see what it looks like. And then we're gonna open up the Wagyu strip loin because it's also finished dry aging. I want you to pay special attention to those white marks on the Umai dry bag right there with that strip loin. That's mold and salt that happens and that's a good thing that's what you're looking for that's going to begin at, at about day 45 and that's going to help add to the complexity of the flavors why don't we go ahead and weigh these in i took the original weight and what we're going to do here is figure out the percentage of weight loss by taking our current weight dividing it by our starting weight subtracting it by one and our weight loss is 38 percent all right so there we go 38 0.4% technically is the amount of weight that we lost in 90 to 95 days. Now we're going to do the same thing with the sausage makers dry aging steak wraps. That's our current weight. We're going to divide that by our starting weight, subtract it from one. And it looks like our weight loss percentage is 32.1 basically. That gives us a difference of about 6%. That means that the Umai dry bags lost 6% more moisture over the course of almost 100 days. It's not that big a deal. And it may have something to do with that elastic netting, but I'm not worried about it. If it was double digits, maybe I'd make a big deal about it. Now it's time to weigh in the Wagyu strip loin. We're gonna do the exact same thing. This has been dry aging for 60 days, and all we're gonna do is take our current weight, divided by our starting weight, and then subtract that from one. And that's gonna give us the percentage of weight loss that we have currently, and it looks like it is 17.78. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the Sausage Makers Dry Aging Steak Wraps. Let's take our current weight divided by our starting weight and subtract that from one, and that's gonna give us a percentage weight loss of 16.21 or 16.2 percent and that simply means that the umai bag lost 1.5 percent more moisture than the sausage makers bag but the numbers are so small it's negligible so i'm not worried about it you see the mold striations right there on both of the meats and that looks beautiful as we make our first cut into the wagyu using the umai dry bag the color looks beautiful the smell is incredible there's Nothing wrong with it so far. The Sausage Maker Dry Aging Steak Wraps, we're gonna go ahead and make our first cut into that. And you know, it's always great when you make that first cut, you get that sneak peek into what seems like a small eternity that you've been waiting for. And it also looks amazing. It smells amazing. It's funky, cheesy, very appetizing. I did notice that the Sausage Maker's Wraps really hold the shape of the steak together with that elastic netting whereas the Umai dry bags kind of flatten out a little bit, but you can easily overcome that if you truss up your roast before you begin the dry aging process. Now it's time to trim off the bark, and I did notice that between the Sausage Makers dry aging steak wraps and the Umai dry bags, the bark was relatively close to the same. Neither product stood out over the other one as having an exceedingly thick bark. And in here, just a second, I'll show you what the bark from the Umai dry bag looks like, and it was roughly about the same, just a couple millimeters. And now that our steaks have been trimmed, I formed most of them into 12 ounce steaks. There were two six ounce steaks that I got out of it, which is what we'll be cooking today. And here's something to think about. Just because Wagyu is some of the most expensive meat on the planet doesn't necessarily make it the best. It simply makes it expensive. Wagyu beef offers a richness and a sweetness that's very different than regular meat. So let's cook these up and see how they taste.
First up is the veal strip loin. This one is from the Sausage Makers Dry Aging Steak Wraps, and everything so far looks amazing. The cook was perfect, it's juicy, it smells great, and the flavor is exactly what you can expect out of a 90-day dry-aged piece of meat. It's very beefy, very strong. It's not hiding its dry-aged flavor. I mean, it's in your face. This is the Umai Dry Bag. Same texture, looks juicy just like the other one. And here we go. That's delicious. Uh, they're both tender. They're both juicy. They're both delicious. They both have that same 90-day dry age flavor. Let's try the Wagyu Strip Loin. This is from the Sausage Makers Dry Aging Steak Wraps. Wagyu beef known for its marbling. We've dry aged it for 60 days. We're going to give it a little taste. And I'll tell you right now, very juicy, very tender, very flavorful. That was the Sausage Makers Dry Aging Steak Wraps. Now we're going to do the Umai Bag. And it, it, if you didn't know any better, like if you had a blindfold, it looks, it smells exactly the same. And, uh, and yeah, and it tastes exactly the same. As we finish this up, let's go ahead and compare both products side by side so that we can get a better picture of what we're looking at. The first category is cost. I found that both of these products were really close in price. Depending on the time of year and what promotions were running, they were within a few dollars of each other. And for that reason, they both get two check marks. Our next category is ease of use. I found that both the dry aging wraps and the Umai bags required some learning curve. If you wet the wraps too much, they become too delicate and could rip, and the Umai bags were slightly clumsy and difficult to seal. Both of those issues are easily overcomable with a little practice, but what really sealed it for me was that the Umai bags required a vacuum sealer in order to operate, whereas the dry aging steak wraps did not. And for that reason, the dry aging steak wraps get my vote for ease of use. Our next category is trim and waist, and I found that both the dry aging steak wraps and the Umai bags as compared to traditional dry aging, both had relatively close to the same amount of trim and waist. And although I thought the wraps controlled the moisture a little bit better, the results were mostly negligible. So for that reason, I consider this to be a tie with the wraps and new my bags. They both get a check mark. For the last category, let's look at flavor. I think that the dry aging steak wraps from the sausage maker and the Umai bags both delivered virtually the same exact flavor, the same flavor you could expect from dry aging meat at 60 days and then again at 90 days. So both get check marks as I found it to be a tie in this category. There you have it, everybody. The battle of the membranes and the way that I see it, it comes down to ease of use. And that's a decision you're going to have to make personally. I can tell you this, if you're going to dry age beef at home in your refrigerator, you can't go wrong with either one of these products. And if you want more information, check out the description box below. If you've got your own personal experience that you'd like to share, leave it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you're new, don't forget to sub, like, comment, share. See you next week.